Well, hello again, friends, and welcome back to Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose. My name is Monica Pitts, and we're going to talk about social media benchmarking today. Yeah, it's totally riveting, all this data. I mean, because who really knows what they're doing with their social media, really? I mean, I'll tell you who. It's those amazing data-loving people who follow their social data like they're stalking a junior high crush. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. You know you hid in the bushes and watched those cuties play ball every now and again. No? Great. (laughs) I'm clearly the only one. (laughs) Okay, I am actually a stalker of all types of data, but um, but when it comes to social media, I do have to rely on a team of friends to keep me informed, like friends and, and employees, because I I really follow our email data strongly, our website data strongly. I I do some data with our social media, but there's just so many platforms and there's so much stuff. And so I figured like if I needed friends to keep me put together and since like 64% of nonprofits don't have a digital marketing plan, I felt like you might also need a team of friends to hook you up. So with the help of those friends and about 10 different marketing benchmark reports, I just read cover to cover, I am going to analyze this data like I would every word from my junior high crush. Don't you remember those conversations where you're like, he said this, but maybe he meant this. Do you think he meant this? What do you think he really meant by that? And all he really said was, hey, uh, I see you dropped your pencil, right? Remember that? <laughs> Gotta love junior high. I've got a kid getting ready to go into junior high, so it's like all becoming very real in my life right now. Anyway, I will reference them as I use them, and then I'll also link to these reports in the show notes just in case you get a wild hankering and want to give all these people your email address too so that you can download and read every single one of them cover to cover because I'm telling you it is riveting. Now, interpreting all the stuff in the reports can be a little tricky because each one of them tells a story through a slightly different lens. And so I combed through them all and interpreted what I feel like they actually mean to you, a nonprofit social media marketer. And I compiled similar factoids, advice, and takeaways for email marketing as well, if that's your thing. I did that in the last episode. You can you can go read uh, read. Read, nah, listen, listen to that too. I mean, I re- you would read about it too. I made a podcast about it, but <laughs> ultimately I think you'd be listening if you're a podcast listener like myself. Okay, and next up I'll be covering websites, my personal favorite. But today, without further ado, let's talk about social media benchmarks for nonprofits. Let's get to business. You're on a mission and you just need more people to know about it. And whether you're brand new to marketing or a seasoned pro, we are all looking for answers to make marketing decisions with purpose. I'm Monica Pitts, a techie, crafty business owner, mom, and aerial dancer who solves communication challenges through technology. This podcast is all about digging in and going digital. I'll share my marketing know-how and business experience from almost 20 years of misadventures. I'll be your backup dancer so you can stop doubting and get moving towards marketing with purpose. I have a favor to ask. Will you review this podcast wherever you're listening, whether it's on Spotify or Amazon Music or iTunes? See, our goal is to help more nonprofits just like you have less stressful and more successful marketing so that they can do more of their good work and make our world a better place. But I can't help them until I meet them. And so your review can actually help me change that. When you leave a review, it helps this podcast show up when people are looking for answers to the problems that the podcast is meant to help them solve. So If you are a nonprofit Marketing with Purpose fan already and you haven't reviewed the podcast or if this is your first time and you learn a thing or two, leave a review so we can connect with more awesome nonprofits just like you. Thank you so much in advance. Now let's get to business. So what do you need to know about nonprofit social media marketing? What is the data that you need to know? All right. So first thing that everybody always asks is how often should I be posting and (laughs) I gotta be honest with you the data is like all over the place on this particular question so I wish I could give you a super stellar grounded answer but instead I'm just gonna have to like talk you through it 
Basically, only you know how often you post, apparently. Because the number of average posts published per day varies very widely depending upon which report you read. Like Sprout Social says that the average is 10 posts per day. TechSoup says 57% of nonprofits post less than five times per week on social media. And really most nonprofits that I speak with say that they post someplace between two and five times a week. So 10 times a day versus five times a week, that's a pretty big disparity. Now, I do have to say though, if you're considering adjusting your post frequency this year, then I suggest ramping it up over time and then carefully watching your metrics to see where that sweet spot is. Like, And then too, weigh the time that you spend writing and publishing posts against the amount of engagement and returns you see from your increased time investment, right? Because we really want to make sure that you're investing your time wisely in your marketing. So if you're going to spend more time investing in your social media, you need to make sure that it's returning for you. One thing I absolutely know is that consistency is king in your marketing, right? So maintaining a relationship when you only talk a few times a year is really difficult or even just like one or two times a week can be difficult, especially when the average Facebook post is only reaching like 5.2% of your total audience right now. And all of my nonprofit friends tell me and also all of our social media clients are feeling this press, especially from Facebook, to pay to have your content shown. They do not favor pages. I think it's total crap. I really do. I really feel like they should be showing your content to people and mine too. But ultimately, they're not. There's been a decrease from everyone across the board. So if you're seeing a decrease in reach and in impressions in your social media content, this is normal right now. Now, the adage of quality is better than quantity you know, I just said consistency is king. So if you're like, oh, well, clearly I just need to like post more, right? Well, but the adage of quality over quantity, it, it totally holds true in social media. But I also want to caution you against spending a million hours on a social post that you have no idea how many people are going to see, right? I tell people to prep for their social media like they go out for happy hour. Like prep for happy hour. Get pretty. Put on some lipstick, right? But It's not like prepping for your wedding day, right? You're not getting your nails done and your makeup done and your hair done. Nope, you don't have to do all those things. It's a social media post. And remember that only like 5.2 of your total audience might see it. So that even leans harder into the fact that you can recycle your content, right? So you can post the same thing more than once because if only 5.2% of them saw it, then I'd say post it again so that way they see it. Now, one way that you can keep that post frequency up and keep the flow of information going is by automating your social media posting. And when I say automate, I don't just mean like have a robot write it. (laughs) I don't know of any robots that do that, but if you know of one, please introduce me. Now the reason that I'm saying that you should automate is because Apparently, 60% of nonprofits reported that they're not automating this. So they're not using a system to write their posts in bulk and then scheduling them using a publishing software. No. That's so time consuming, friends. It's so time consuming to write every single thing separately. Like it is the most amazing time saver ever to write stuff in bulk and then schedule it and have it release on its own it's like then you can go back to your normal job and actually do it you know and what's so cool is that Facebook and Instagram actually offer this feature natively for free it's free and if you're on multiple platforms you can use a system like Loomly that's what we use it starts at just $12 a month and allows you to post 10 networks. And I swear, I'm not affiliated. I don't have to tell you this is like affiliate. I'm not making an ad about it either. Like, I like these folks. They do a good job with their products, okay? Now, we conducted a social experiment last year. And we found that if we post our social media natively, especially in Facebook, not using a scheduling software, then it is better distributed to our audience. So more people see it if I post it in Facebook natively which I know kind of goes against what I just said using a scheduling software. And my nonprofit social media friends also report finding this same trend, but we all agree that done is better than perfect. So if you're scared to use a social media scheduler because you think it's going to 
really super negatively impact how much your posts are shown, then weigh the pros and cons and do a test. We conducted our experiment and we committed to posting for three additional months after the experiment was over natively in Facebook. And after like those three more months of time consuming ridiculousness, we decided that we would just much rather put it in the scheduling software and check a box to publish it everywhere at once, right? Because done is better than perfect. So Oh, friends, just you've got this, okay? People want to hear from you. And if this is the way that they're going to get get it from you, then, then by all means, schedule it. Now, one thing I'd like you to do is watch other organizations for inspiration. One of these benchmarking reports did a really cool job of explaining what different types of nonprofits are doing and, and how their social media is performing. So if you're not sure what to do or maybe you're looking for inspiration, there are a few types of organizations that are absolutely knocking it out of the park. And so keep an eye on them, like maybe follow them. Pay attention especially to animal rights and wildlife organizations because they are doing it right. They attract the most followers of any other type of nonprofit. Now, either it's because of their amazing animal pictures, because who doesn't love a puppy picture, or their savvy strategy. They have nearly two times the number of Facebook followers and 2.4 times more Instagram followers. Now, while animal rights and wildlife groups have the most followers, a few other types of nonprofits are actually beating them out for engagement, according to the 2021 MNR Benchmarks Report. So engagement, that's when people view your videos, comment, like, or share your content. Public media engagement is at 0.51%. Health is at 0.54%. And hunger is at 0.82%. So all of those types of nonprofits actually beat out those animal rescue organizations. Which makes sense because, I mean, ultimately humans outrank puppies in the grand scheme of things and... We are going through a pandemic and so people are very health conscious right now like more than ever. I also want you to keep an eye on retail social trends because they are by far the most engaged with social media content in networks according to Gartner's benchmark report. So take note of like those post styles and what makes people interact. I mean I know it sounds far-fetched but I know that many nonprofits are struggling to meet and reach younger audiences and retail has it down to a science, right friends? I mean, retail leads social interactions per post on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube and is second on Facebook compared to any other industry. Now, some of the most popular brands advertise in a very non-profit-like strategy. You see their commercials. And conscious consumers are buying from and supporting brands because of their support of a social or political issue. And that's why they follow and support you too, right? Some of the issues that they are most likely to buy or follow a brand because of our anti-racist stances that denounce discrimination, support of environmental protection and sustainability and natural conservation initiatives, support of the rights for LGBTQIA+, a stance to reduce gun violence, or a stance that focusing on specific racial or ethnic groups at the expense of others is unfair or harmful. So when these retail businesses share their views on these social issues, customers have in the past year specifically bought from those retail brands. Okay, I I know I'm talking kind of slow here, but if I feel like all the words kind of mean the same things and they're jumbling together, ultimately, when retail brands support social causes, just like nonprofits support, that's what you're all about, right? People are more likely to buy from them. Yeah. So I think that we can learn so much as nonprofit social media marketers from watching retail and seeing how they do it. Yeah. We can learn from them, so pay attention to them. And follow them 
for inspiration. So go follow a few animal rights or wildlife organizations, also a few focused on improving health or lowering hunger, and then and a few retail organizations that are philanthropically minded and watch what they post and how people interact and ask yourself, like, how can I do this for my organization? Use their success as creative fodder to create your own. So a few minutes ago, I explained that engagement for certain types of organization is higher than for others, right? So that's when people view your videos or comment or like or share your content. The reports that I read placed nonprofit engagement on social media someplace between 0.1 and 0.8%. <laughs> depending upon what type of nonprofit you are. Now, I found that the most comprehensive report was the MNR benchmark report. And so if you want to go look up your particular type of nonprofit and see what the average rate is, I would suggest looking up the MNR benchmark report because it's way more detailed than a lot of them. And they polled just so many nonprofits. So it comes from a very large group of people, which makes it much more reliable data, in my humble opinion. (laughs) Now, if your engagement is lower than that, then that probably means that the content that you're posting isn't exactly what your audience is interested in. And we really want high engagement because the more people interact with your content, the more likely the networks are to show it to other people. That's how things go viral is that other people are interacting with it, right? But in order to stumble upon something that goes viral, we have to actually post things that people are interested in, right? So if you're looking for creative inspiration on what to post, I feel like you can learn a lot from looking at consumer trends. Social Sprout says that, or I should say Sprout Social. They're not, they're not sprouting. They're sprouting social. They're not socialing Sprout. Either way. Okay, so Social Sprout says over 50% of people follow brands on social media to learn about their new products and services. And according to TechSoup, Nonprofits focus the majority of their social posts, like 61% of them, making organizational announcements. So that's good. You're rocking it on that front. That's really good. But we also have to consider the other reasons that people follow brands. 53% say they want to learn about new products and services. 52% say they want to stay up to date on company news. 38% say they want to be entertained. 35% want to read other people's reviews and experiences with the brand, and then 34% want to be inspired, according to the 2021 Content Benchmarks Report by Sprout Social. Okay, so here's the deal. What's so awesome is that you already have all that stuff right there at your fingertips. A day in the life of a nonprofit staffer or volunteer is absolutely filled with entertainment, right? Success stories and inspiration. You have all kinds of stuff going on. So you can round out the rest of your posts by showing people what it's like behind the scenes and brightening their day by sharing the difference that you make in the community. So after reading why people follow brands, I feel like nonprofits have this incredible opportunity to talk to people because You guys have all this at your fingertips. You're doing this. Yeah, you inspire people. You have stories that you can tell. This is is what social media is all about and why people are following brands. Another thing that I found interesting but not super surprising about these reports is that YouTube is huge and it's just getting even bigger. Now I know that a lot of nonprofits are using YouTube as part of their marketing strategy. And people always ask me, Monica, what's the next big thing in social media? And, and, And here, guys, I've got an answer for you. It already exists. It's called YouTube. Yeah. The only major growth in network usage reported in 2021 was YouTube and Reddit. And if you haven't heard of Reddit, I don't think that you're alone. I actually heard about Reddit on a podcast. I'd heard about, I mean, I'd heard the word so many times, but I didn't really know what it was all about. So I thought I'd try it. And I still honestly have no idea how to use it. So I'm really not qualified to advise you on how to weave that into your social strategy at all. (laughs) But I now have an account and I made a really, really cute um, avatar. I'm very cute. I think I'm a unicorn with a mermaid tail. If you see me out there, say hi. I I won't respond because I have no idea how to use Reddit. But it is growing, friends. So If you'd like new trends, then go on out there and give it a whirl and then tell me how you did it, please. 
Okay, but uh, so, so let me get back to the point though. If you're doing videos, put them out there. Now, YouTube is actually really unique because it's not just social media. It's also a search engine because people search for answers on YouTube and YouTube content shows up in Google's search engine, right? So it's pretty powerful. If you're making videos, if it's anything from dog training to, it could be anything, your Facebook Lives, you can broadcast them on YouTube simultaneously using a streaming service like StreamYard. We use it ourselves. Plus, the network reaches a very wide age range. So it's getting in front of lots of different ages of people. It's used by the vast majority of adults under the age of 65. So it's getting a lot of that younger audience and the audience that has the money right now to invest in your cause. So get those videos out there. Another thing I want you to consider is LinkedIn. Like if you're doing Facebook, some of that content can really easily be flipped over in the LinkedIn. And only 37% of nonprofits use LinkedIn. I feel like your informational, inspirational, and your announcement style posts can fit in well in the LinkedIn network. The good news is, is that you don't have to post a million times a day to get a foothold in LinkedIn. Companies that post like 20 times per month reach at least 60% of their audience, which remember what we just said about Facebook, that's like 5%, right, per post. So... According to LinkedIn, that, that's how much it reaches. 20 times per month reaches around 60% of your audience. So that's kind of exciting. LinkedIn also reports that if you just post two times a week, then you would see a rise in engagement. So if you're considering dipping your toe in LinkedIn, then absolutely post two times a week, see how it goes. Try posting 20 times a month. See if you reach your whole audience. Like, just see. It's it's great experimentation, right? Now, roughly half of adults who have a bachelor's or an advanced degree, so 51% say that they use LinkedIn, and those adults are at a higher income level. And so it allows them the ability to donate to your organization. So you're getting in front of them. You can also go live on LinkedIn now, similar to Facebook. So you can stream simultaneously, once again, using a service like StreamYard out to LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube all at once. The other cool thing about LinkedIn is that even just linking your YouTube videos on LinkedIn like allows them to play directly in the LinkedIn feed and they typically get a 75% higher share rate. So video is great, right? I keep talking about video, but <laughs> so so everybody loves video. Let, let's get that out there. Uh, but I, I do want to lead this video topic now that I'm segueing into video with saying that like if video isn't your thing, you're still okay right now. Now some reports are all about video on social. They say it's absolutely the way to go and we see in our own client social media reports that video is often their best performing type of content. And some of my social media nonprofit marketers, like my friends that I talk to and get this get these great inspirational ideas from, they say that video is some of their best types of content too, especially those really short ones. Now Sprout Social says that video is underused by marketers. But marketers understand that it's important because 54% of marketers state video is the most effective type of content to reach their goals. Now though, friends, I have to call a spade a spade. And while video is like super cool, it's also super time consuming. I mean, who has time to produce all that video? Doing Facebook Lives is one thing, but producing like awesome testimonial videos is really time consuming. Story videos, all of those types of video content that has the potential to go viral and be absolutely amazing is super time consuming. And the good news is that as far as nonprofit social posts go, while video posts do absolutely outperform photos, just like for everybody else, it's not by that much. On Instagram, video posts actually get the lowest engagement rate at 1.45%. And the best average engagement rate on Instagram is on carousel posts at 1.94%, followed closely by just straight up photo posts at 1.74%. 
So you could lean into your photos and just post carousels on Instagram and get better engagement rates than you would on your videos. And surprisingly, photo posts on Facebook pages are actually the most shared. They're like 55.6% more shared than any of the other post types. So the moral of the story is if video isn't in your wheelhouse, you can still get the job done, but you can't live without photos, especially those with people's faces. When I was reading the benchmarks report once again from MNR, Facebook post engagement score by type of media, photo, link, and video, they're all really close. Yes, video has better engagement. Photos comes in second and then links come in last. But ultimately, I mean, do just just like with the automating thing, friends, like if you don't have time to make all these videos, you're going to be okay. Post your great photos, especially those of people's faces. People love videos of people's faces. Experiment with different genders of people, different ages of people, um, and just really, and people doing different things. Oh, and one of my um, nonprofit participants from the year in giving training said that like they have great results from posting pictures of dogs and they don't even serve, (laughs) they don't even They don't even, they're not an animal-based nonprofit at all. But they said if they post pictures of dogs, people have great interaction with them. So, but everybody said pictures of people and then pictures of animals. And and yes, video is great. But if you don't have time to do it, it's okay because your photos are still going to do all right. Okay? I got to tell you guys, I could ramble on about this stuff all day. I just love looking at all this information and drawing conclusions about it for you. Like, I really, really do. I, I'm i glad that I decided to tackle these topics. I was, I was a little apprehensive because, well, <laughs> it's pretty time consuming to read and digest 10 different benchmarking reports worth of data. But I feel like by me doing it for you, you can learn from it and I learn from it too. I can make better decisions for my clients and for myself. I just want to recap some of the, like, items that I covered today before I let you go. Ultimately, only you know how often you post apparently because there was such a disparity in how many times people post. If you're planning on adjusting your post frequency, make sure that you pay attention to your data and your numbers will let you know if and when you are at the right amount of posts for your audience because your engagement is going to be up and your impressions and reach are going to be up. It's going to do great. Just remember that you can post more than you think you can because your posts don't reach your whole audience. They only reach a small segment of your audience each time that you post. Also, consider automating. Now, I know that it's going to do better if you post it natively. I know. I did an experiment. I know this. But remember, we have to weigh out those pros and cons and decide whether having more time is better or having more engagement is better. Make sure that you're getting a return on that investment, whether it's posting more often or posting natively to multiple different platforms, you got to get a return on that investment. If, if you're not getting involvement in, in increased metrics in more than just social media for your nonprofit, then invest your time doing other things. We talked about the different organizations to watch for inspiration. We talked about animal rights and welfare or welfare organizations. We also talked about looking at public media, health and hunger organizations, and then also keeping an eye on those retail social trends. So retail stores, or I guess, are they even stores anymore because they're selling everything online? I don't even know. But basically retail companies who are selling things and also have a nonprofit-like agenda because they are doing great and people are following them and buying their products because they have a nonprofit-like agenda and they are the most interact with and most engaged with content out on social media right now. We talked about if your engagement rate is low, just really try to share with people that day in the life of a nonprofit staffer and share any entertaining like snippets that you have, your success stories and inspiration because people love that and that's why they're following brands on social media too. Remember, if you have video, get it out on YouTube because it is like growing like gangbusters. People are spending time on YouTube and it is 
Like it is the next big social media thing that already exists right now. Also consider LinkedIn. I know a lot of nonprofits are not using it, but there's a lot of content that you can post on LinkedIn. Now you're not going to post personal items on LinkedIn. That's not what it's for. But so much of what you do as a nonprofit is business related. And one of the participants in my year-end giving training um, breakout session said that they have really good luck in posting about their sponsors and corporate um, donations on LinkedIn and then tagging those companies on LinkedIn. So it's just something to think about. We also talked about how if video isn't your thing, you're still okay. While video is king and it is absolutely going to be displayed better than any other type of content that you put on social media, it's not necessarily heads above that content. It is, it's better, but it's not significantly better. So definitely need to use pictures, use people's faces, use pictures of puppies. It's all gonna do great and and if you don't have time for video you're okay you're really gonna be okay just keep 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 keeping those pictures out there and I want to leave you with this this one final thought to wrap up this post can you guys hear my dogs back here can you hear them she's like snorting and like yeah sneezing I'm sorry I don't want to record this whole bit again so like just Ignore that sneezing creature back there. She means well, right? Until she starts barking. And then that's, that's not awesome. Okay, so back to that one last piece of information I wanted to give you before I let you go. If you are one of the 82% of nonprofits who are posting less than one social post per day and you're afraid of posting more because you're going to be bothering your audience, don't be afraid, okay? Because... Remember that people are following brands to learn about the products, the services, experiences, to be entertained and inspired. Remember that? And you do all of those things. And your audience really does want to hear from you. Social media engagement per nonprofit post is one of the highest of any industry. People love you. They want to support you. But the conversation isn't even starting because it's taking you so long to make every post by hand. Because I know that 60% of nonprofits, you're not automating your social media. You're not using the tools that you can use even super inexpensively to get that information out there and keep it going consistently. So this year, I really want to encourage you to take action. Consider using social media automation to make sure that your posts get out there regularly. And if, even if you don't, even if you don't, just stay connected with your supporters and don't be afraid to keep them updated via social media. Yes. So thank you so much for spending this time with me today. I really enjoyed sharing all this data with you. And if you enjoyed it, or if you learned a thing or two, then consider reviewing this podcast Really, whenever you review Nonprofit Marketing with Purpose, you give us the opportunity to meet another person just like yourself. And our goal is to help our nonprofit audience solve their marketing problems. We want to empower you with the data and the information that you need to be able to market with purpose and get your cause out there and fund your organization and do more amazing things for our world. But I got to meet those people before I can help them. So just give me a review. I, I would love to read it. I promise I will. So if you want to have more like really fun data and benchmarking talk, you can go back to the previous episode where I talked all about email marketing and everything I learned about that in the benchmarking reports and more stories of my own misadventures in email marketing. And then the, I'm going to post another one of these podcasts about websites. Woo-hoo, because I love talking about website data. Man, that's like my favorite favorite type of data to talk about so join me back for that and until next time go forth and market with purpose so thank you so much for your time today once again my name is monica pitts and you're listening to nonprofit marketing with purpose now before i let you go i just want to remind you about that little favor i asked you about in the beginning will you please review this podcast wherever you're listening It will help us show up when people are looking for answers to the problems that this podcast will help them solve. So if you're a fan and you haven't reviewed the podcast, please 
leave me a review. That would be so awesome. I would love to hear your feedback. And if this was your first time, I mean, double welcome. And I hope you learned a thing or two. So leave a review so we can connect with even more awesome nonprofits just like you and help them on their journey to less stressful and more successful marketing. Thanks again for your time today. Now, until next time, go forth and market with purpose.